Do you want to learn how to create a program to publish commands to the wheels of a robot using ROS2? Then stay with me. This video is for you. Hello ROS developers and welcome to the ROS2 tutorials video series. If you want to learn anything about ROS, this is your channel. ROS navigation, ROS with drones, ROS for autonomous cars, everything ROS is here. Learn ROS step by step and push your ROS learning in just 10 minutes of video. I am Alberto and today we are going to be talking about how to create a publisher in ROS2 in order to move a robot. That's what we are going to do today, but before anything else, remember to visit our Robot Ignite Academy, our online academy where you will find practical online ROS courses using simulated robots. No installation required. You will find that link to the academy on the video description. And oh yes, let's go with the video. So first of all, as always, we are going to open ROS Development Studio, where I have here already a ROS jet prepared. You can see it here, ROS2 Publisher, which uh, it's here. And I will share at the end of this video, I will share the link of the ROS jet with you in the video description so that you can get it as well. And basically uh, here, what I have is, let me open a shell first of all, an IDE. So basically uh, what I have here is just, for now, it's just a simulation of a touchable robot which I have here, which I'm going to launch in ROS1 and I'm going to connect to it using the ROS1 bridge. We have another video of this ROS2 tutorial series talking about the ROS bridge, so you can go there and, and see how to use it and more, more uh, details about it. But yeah, so let's start. First of all, what I'm going to do is to launch the simulation. And for that, I'm going to come here, choose launch file, and I'm going to select the Turtle Gazebo main launch, which is here. There we go. Okay, let me come here a moment. Yeah, so this is the project basically that I have uh, used, that I, I have opened, and I will, I'm going to share with you at the end of, of this uh, video. You will find it in the video description. This ROS2 publisher. Let me close this for now. Uh, yeah, so here you have it, the ROS2 publisher. So the simulation has loaded properly, excellent. So now what I'm going to do is to basically launch the ROS1 bridge here. And for this, basically I'm going to use, well, I can use here, as you can see, we have some um, Bashar C files for the bridge, for sourcing ROS1, sourcing ROS2, etc. Uh, here I'm going to use the Bashar C bridge directly. You can, as, as I've said before, you can have a look at the ROS1 bridge video of this series in order to understand better uh, why I'm doing this. But um, let me check. Well, actually, I'm going to just opt ROS melodic setup bash. Yeah, I know. And source um, opt ROS dashing, which is ROS2 version, bash. Okay, let me, here I have a, open it, I will come uh, here in a moment. And now what I will need to do is to export the ROS master Ruby as well. So let me check here the value, echo ROS master Ruby. So here we need to do an export of the ROS master URI. As I've said, I'm going to enter into much detail uh, here. So if you want to uh, better understand what I'm doing here, have a look at the ROS1 bridge uh, video of this series. So yeah, there we go. I make sure now that my ROS master URI is properly set. Now ROS2 run, ROS1 bridge, 
and dynamic bridge. Yeah, so basically this is uh, the roof from bridge, how I started. And this basically is to be able to, let me close it for now. This, this is basically to be able to send commands from ROS2 using ROS2 uh, to a ROS1 simulation, which is this one, which is running in ROS1 in Melodic specifically. Okay, great. So now here I'm going to source opt ROS dashing. I'm going to source ROS2 because I'll be working in ROS2 in this shell. So let me source here um, ROS dashing. And I will create a package now. So I'm going to use this course. This is our ROS2 course, which I'm going to use for reference. So, uh, so that I can do things faster. For instance, here I'm going to get the command in order to create a package. So I'm going to come here to the ROS2 workspace. And here I will create a package, which I'm going to name. Let me modify just a little bit this. So the name of my package is going to be let's say vel for velocity publisher well top, top topic publisher it's okay yeah and now here yes i'm going to modify i'm going to be using geometry messages for the twist message so yeah let's create this package here and this is going to create my files here in the ros2 workspace there we go so now inside the rsc folder i'm going to create my my publisher file which is going to be velpub cpp there we go and now here I'm going to copy also for reference. Here, as you can see, we have a code, but this is the old style of uh, coding of a publisher, the ROS1 style. So I'm not going to use this one, but I'm going to use the composable node, the composable way of doing it, which is this one. As you can see here, we have uh, the node composition section. So I'm going to use this style of coding, which is the proper one for ROS2 because uh, as a big difference from ROS1, in ROS2 we have this node composition that uh, basically uh, allows to run uh, multiple nodes in a single process, yeah? This is why we are going to use this style of coding, which is more object-oriented uh, style. As you can see here, I'm using a class, etc. yeah? So yeah, let's come here and let's now do some modifications to the code because this is an example for another thing. And I'm, uh, what I'm going to do, basically what I want to do is to be able to publish here, if I do a ROS2 topic, ROS topic list. There we go. We are going to be able to see the, well, no, not now because I don't have the bridge running, but if I have the bridge running, Oh yeah, they're, they're, they're not still the connections done. So let me open another shell to show the topics. Yeah, so this will generate the bridge basically when I publish into a topic. So here I'm not publishing, I'm just checking. So that's why I cannot see the ROS1 topics, but I can see them here from a ROS1 shell. So basically what I'm going to do is to publish into the common bell topic in order to uh, be able to move to control this robot, robot, yeah? But uh, here I'm using uh, ROS1 and I don't want ROS1, so I'm going to do this from this shell using ROS2 and ROS1 bridge. But yeah, let's do some modifications here to our code. So basically, first of all, I'm not going to be using the standard messages int message. I'm going to be using geometry messages uh, and the twist message, which is the one that the command bell topic uses twist message, there we go. Then the name of the node is okay. Now here, I'm going to modify as well. In fact, let me just do a fast modification. So for all the standard messages that I have around the code, I'm going to modify them for geometry messages. There we go. And also for all the int32 that I have, I'm going to modify this by twist. So let's modify all as well. Excellent. Now, what else? So here, instead of the counter topic, I want to publish into the common bell topic. Yeah, second modification. Um, 
yeah, this is all okay, I think. So now here, geometry messages twist, message data, okay. So now the structure of the twist message is uh, like this. So it basically has two fields, which are, let me show you this here from a Ross one shell very quickly. Show twist. So as you can see here, I have the linear velocities in x, y, and z, and the angular velocities in x, y, and z. So these are the fields that the twist message has. So here I'm going to basically fill the linear x with a 0 0.5 meters per second, and also the angular z. So this way, if I do a linear uh, velocity in the x-axis and an angular velocity in the z-axis, basically what I'm going to do is to make the robot uh, moving circles, yes? So angular z, it's going to be 0 0.5 as well. Then I don't want this count thing. This count variable, I don't want it. Let me search if it's... Okay, so we also have it here, so let's remove it. Because I don't want it. Okay. Then, yeah, so basically, as you can see here, I'm just uh, doing the includes. I'm getting the twist message, RCL, CPP, library, etc. Then here I create the, I create the simple publisher class, which, which inherits from the node class. And here I'm declaring the publisher, which is going to use the twist message and it's going to publish into the command belt topic. And I'm also defining a timer object, which is binded to this timer callback function, which I define here. And in the and this, this is going to be triggered uh, each 500 milliseconds. Yeah, this timer callback function. Then here, basically, I'm, I'm generating the twist message. I'm filling it with values, with 0 0.5 uh, meters per second in the linear x and angular z velocities. And then I'm pushing this message here as well. And then here uh, we have the shared pointers to the publisher and to the timer object, which are defined here. And uh, yeah, here in the main, basically what I do is to to run the code, to, to initiate the node and to spin here the publisher. So yeah, that's it basically. So now what we need to do is to modify the semi list so that I can compile this. So let me also, I think somewhere here in the course I have uh, what I need to, uh, yeah. this here. So let me come here to the semi list file and add this. Yeah, the the in the launch file I don't need it I just need this so basically I'm going to generate this um, executable this node which is going to be generated from the velpup cpp file not this one but velpup cpp which is this file here that we have just created here also it's not standard messages but geometry messages. I need that dependency, and yeah, this is the name of the node. Okay, great. So let's compile this. Let's come here and compile this. Go con build simlink install. Remember that Colcon is the tool you set in order to compile in ROS2 instead of Catkin, that's it, that is used for ROS1. So let's compile this and see if everything goes uh, fine. Hopefully yes. If not, we are going to solve uh, the error that uh, any error that appears. It goes for the fifty percent. All right. Okay. So here we have some messages. Okay, yeah, so here it's saying that I'm using a deprecated syntax, which needs to be updated, which is true. But for now, let me... Okay, so this is just a warning, so everything went okay. Set up 
So let's source the workspace. And now, yes, I will need to run the dynamic bridge so that I can communicate with the ROS1 simulation. The ROS bridge is running. And then here we have the simulation. I'm going to run my node, so ROS2 run. It was uh, file publisher, right? No, topic publisher, the package. Topic publisher. There we go. And the note, it was called here simple publisher, whatever. Okay, so simple publisher note, it is. Yeah, there we have it. So let's run this. And as you will see here, uh, a bridge will be created for the common well topic. There we have it. So the bridge has been created for the common well topic. And now the robot here has started moving, as you can see. So yeah, great. Everything is working as expected. The robot is moving. Um, we have created our publisher here using node composition, the node composition way of programming in ROS2. And yeah, that's all for this video. I hope you've learned something new, you've liked it. Uh, remember, if you liked the video, subscribe to our channel, give us a like, and for any feedback or comments you want to, to give us, publish your comments in the comments area down below, and yeah, see you in the next video. Goodbye, and keep pushing your ROS learning.